Deep in a mountain valley in the remote island of Papua is a land that straddles modernity and tradition. We traveled for days to reach a village of the fabled Dani tribe, whose menacing reputation as fearsome warriors is overshadowed only by stories of their cannibal past. <laughs> The tribe performs this mock battle to train its younger members for tribal warfare that's still common here. Some of the older men still wear traditional clothes, which consist of nothing more than penis sheaths and elaborate headdress. After living for a week with them, we saw a man sharpening arrows outside his straw hut, or honai. 73-year-old Judas is the last surviving cannibal of his village. In a tribal war years ago, not unlike this practice battle, Judas' brother was killed by a neighboring tribe and eaten. Yudas recounts how he mobilized his clansmen to attack the enemy tribe. They captured his brother's killer and then cooked him. The village is celebrating the end of a recent war with a neighboring tribe. And hundreds gather for the peace feast to remember the fallen and the injured. Four pigs are sacrificed and buried in freshly dug pits layered with tubers and vegetables. Burning hot stones are placed inside and covered, creating a natural oven that cooks the food. The days of eating human meat are now over. Bisa makan, tapi sudah Indonesia sudah masuk sudah larang, hmm. larang hmm. pembunuhan orang. Hmm. Okay. Terus sel selain itu? Ya, pembunuhan orang. Terus yang selain apa? Injil sudah masuk. Hmm. Okay. Injil masuk. Jadi kita terima Injil hmm. yang sudah, sudah like. yang pembunuhan orang itu dari belakang. Buang dari sudah samping. Buang. Okay. Buang. With his cannibal past behind him. Yudas now spends his days growing crops and living off the land. He says he doesn't feel guilty for what he did, but regrets participating in revenge killing and feasting. As modernity encroaches upon these untouched lands, we get a sense that it won't be long before tribal lore becomes a thing of the past. <laughs>